So now I will try to explain dynamic programming, which is the basis on how to obtain the optimal alignment. I would mention that there are a couple of other videos on the site that are might explain this in more detail and better than I do it. So if you don't think my explanation is useful, go on and watch these instead. There are also documentations on many pages in the links that are displayed how to do this. And this is very fundamental for all very much by Snapchat. So you really should try to understand this. And it's uh, also part of the lab we'll have. So the whole idea of the dynamic programming is to calculate what is the cost for aligning to position. And if you remember from, from the matrix we had, we can have um, an alignment is two positions aligned that is represented by a diagonal arrow. While if you have a gap, you have uh, an, a straight arrow, either horizontal or vertical. So that means the whole idea here is that we want to calculate what is the score for one cell here. So this is the score SIJ score. And to get to this so score, you use what you have calculated before. So use the things to the top left in this case. So we calculated the numbers before. And you can get to the score in three different ways. You can go to diagonal from i minus one and j minus one. That means these are aligned, you align this one too. Or you can go from the top one to i minus one and j, and i and j minus one. And the whole idea is then that you actually calculate which of these three paths are the best. And you do this assuming that you have all of these blue and red scores calculated, and you add the additional score that you get from taking one of them, and you pick the highest number. And you can prove that if you do that, you'll find optimal alignment. So if you take the, the diagonal path, you just add the score of aligning that's your i and j, which is the substitution matrix I talked about before. On the other hand, if you take the other scores, you have to add the cost of the gap. Again, are, you, that means that you make a, a gap in this position this part of the matrix. So actually, you can even do longer gaps. For instance, the gaps that depend on the length of it. You can have you have you might have to look in several steps back. But that's also three So the idea is that you have to you can jump here in different ways. So let's do an example. So let's try to align these two sequences. It's D A A T T C A G T T A versus G D A T C D A. You can see that the sequence starts similar and the sort of six and the same letters, but in between there are different things. You can find some patterns. You have G A in a couple of things that could be nice to align. Maybe with a T C and then the G A and somewhere else. You, you can think of the line. It's not ob obvious what is the optimal alignment. So we start with filling it with zeros. Because if we have nothing aligned to the, the position before, we have no score at all. We have got nothing in this case. And then we want to calculate the score for the first alignment. And we say that we have a, uh, we just give it very simple. We get a score of one if two letters are identical. And uh, uh, so in this case, the G aligns with G. And the best way to get there is to do from the red position. So that's one, because zero plus one is one. But you can also say for we go down from zero, one of zeros. And that there, then you would have the gap, the cost, cost, you would have lowest score than one. And they can fill in the rest of it. And the only way to fill in the rest of it is basically to gaps. In this case, we have gaps cost nothing, because it has zeros. So the best way to get the score here is one, one, one. And you can actually fill out the, also the column to the left and have one, one, one on the way there. So that's the best score again. Next one, you want to ask the is how to align. Uh, G to A. And G to A are not identical. So you have three options to get there. You can align the A the diagonal. So you have G to align to G first, then G to align to A, A. And G and A gives zero, so you will get a score of one. You can also take the G aligned to go horizontally. You get, and that means you introduce a gap. So you take the score of zero out of it, or, or vertically, and you will introduce a gap. So you have three different ways. You actually get the same score in all cases. You have to pick one and run in the first one. And then you can keep on going down. So the next position is number two. We have GTA, so align to GA. And now, if you go there from the diagonal, the one on top of it, you actually get another match. So A aligns A, you get two. 
So then the best score there is to get a two, and you're gonna keep on thinking on the line next to it. You can do the next line. Next time you're gonna save C the G and A lines, you get a one. And you're gonna go so you're gonna have a one in the third row, first row, and you're gonna have oh, keep on having twos later. So what is the first number here? First one is a one. You have two, two, two. But you can finally get a three at the bottom line because you can align a G and an A and an A to the A. You have a lot of gaps in between, but that will be at least the optimal alignment. You keep, keep on feeling out alignment until you find at the end you have a score of six. It means there are six residues that can be aligned. So six in the six. And how, how this alignment looks like, you have to do what is called trace back, so you can figure out how you got there, we'll try to remember that. And you have to go back, and six comes from the five and it's diagonal, so you map out the rest. Five was come from either the other five or from the four on top of it. That's the you don't know, you don't know which one, so you choose one of them. You take away this one, you take away this, and three five. This five must come from the other five or from the four on top of it. Take away this. This five must come from the four on top of it, and this four comes from the other four next to it. This four must come from the three. So take away that. The three must come from the other three, for the other two. This three must come from the two. This two must come from the one, and the one must come from the one. So this is actually alignment. So you have the first, so the G is the aligned to G. Or first one. First uh, G is aligned to G, and then the G is aligned to the A, and then the A is aligned to the A. And the T is aligned with T, and then you have a gap, and the C is aligned with C, and then you have a gap, and then the G is aligned with G, and you have two gaps, and then the A is aligned with line. Okay, so you get the line that looks like that. So this is the optimal alignment, or one of the optimal alignments, because you do some small variations again, so you can have another gap in the beginning, and then you get the same alignment. The same score. So you have six positions that are identical. So you can write very simple code here, and you, just, uh, you fill out the matrix by just going through all the separate matrix and look uh, what is the match step and what is the delete state and what is the cost of it. And the trace back code to find the way back is also quite simple. 